Good morning, everyone. My name is Heather Grant, and I'm happy to be the host of this four-part series webinar called Embrace the Rhythm of Your B, Bernina 880. Uh -huh. Today, we have joining us Sarah Caldwell and Debbie Kachamani, and I'm going to let them um, talk about themselves because they're amazing, and I couldn't give them enough kudos just talking. Um, but first, I want to cover some housekeeping. Um, if you're having technical issues like you can't hear or you are um, having vision like the screen isn't showing or whatever the best thing to do is close down the webinar and come back that usually resolves almost all the issues if you keep having issues you are welcome to send me uh, messages via the chat um in terms of q a uh, you feel free to ask q a throughout it if there's a good break i'll pipe up but generally we do the q a at the end um so we'll ask questions at the end of the presentation but feel free to ask them anytime um i have them all written down and i'll hold on to them uh, for the end there are no handouts for this webinar, so just an FYI, and Debbie will be giving you homework, so be sure to take notes. All right, well, I'm going to turn it over to these two wonderful women, and I will see you back here at the end to help with questions. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Embrace the Rhythm of Your 880. My name is Debbie Kashimani. I am the Bernina Sales and Product Trainer, and thank you, Heather, for all the intro stuff. So I, uh, my job with Bernina is to train up our dealers and their staff on how to use our products. And so I don't very often get the opportunity to speak to our customers out there. So thank you all for coming. And I hope I can train you on how to thread this machine. I've been working with an eight series machine since it came into existence. And I absolutely love it. And um, we're going to talk to Sarah here in just a minute. So our first, our first um, uh, thing I want to tell you is, yes, this is a series of four webinars. Uh, I decided to break apart some of the things that I wanted to talk about into smaller bites because I thought it would be easier for you to learn them and remember them. So the four webinars we'll cover, soon we'll get back to Sarah in a second. <laughs> the four webinars are, uh, today's gonna be, um, this morning is gonna be how to thread the top. The afternoon, to this afternoon, it's going to be how to thread the bobbin correctly. And then Thursday, the morning is going to be security functions and specialty threads. And then the afternoon, we're gonna talk about sewing for success and kind of speak back to that rhythm that the 880 has. It's kind of unique from other brands. But first, I wanna to talk to Sarah. Welcome, Sarah. Hi, hi, everybody. So, um, Debbie, it's great to be with you all. I'm a bit like you. I don't often get to talk to end customers, so it's really mm -hmm. exciting to be with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just tell us a little bit about you and your job with Bernina real quick. Okay, so because it's only 30 minutes, I'll keep it keep it quick. Um, I work for Benina International in Steckbourne in Switzerland. I'm sorry, I don't sound very Swiss. I started my Benina journey in New Zealand. So I uh, was born in New Zealand and I worked for Benina and I got this dream job to go and work in the factory to help develop sewing machines. And I'm now working in international marketing and I uh, do a lot of the education materials uh, in my team. So, yeah, it's great to be here with you all. And um, I also love using the B880. So I have one right behind me. You can see, ta-da. Yeah. So I, I'm, I don't know what else I can say. Of course, those of you who know about Lord of the Rings uh, will know that um, it was filmed in New Zealand. And I also got to work on the project. And they... A lot of the people doing the, the costumes were using Benina and they um, they called us and I got to work um, as a digitizer for making the embroidery design. So that was really exciting. Well, that sounds like it was a great experience. Wow. Yeah, it was it was great. And it was great for Benina because, you know, <laughs> sewing through all those crazy fabrics that they used on the um, set, you know, heavy for and sure. fine fabrics. Oh, how fun. Well, I have a couple questions for you. So first, tell us a little bit about the making of the 8 Series. Just, you know, tell us what that was like. Okay, so, well, it was really exciting to be involved in this project. It was really a gathering of very uh, clever people from all over the world. It was a machine that was primar primarily produced for the U.S. market, but it was really um, a gathering of 
a lot of information that we received from end customers and we did focus groups and we really wanted to know what people really wanted in a top of the line machine. So then it was up to the amazing engineers that I work with in Steckborn to come up with and make all the wishes come true. So that's things like the bigger space, the automatic threading, the large bobbin and all these types of things. So it was a wonderful experience and um, I think one of the most interesting things for me to see was it was the, a really a different platform and um, it, that came along with its challenges, especially for customers already with Bernina sewing machines because they were used to other ones. But I think there's so many people out there at, who are just so excited about this machine and they love it and um, I love it too. Well, let's see. So tell me now, what is your favorite feature on the B880? Well, as a sewer that uses many different threads and um, different weights of threads, because I do everything from tent fixing to costumes to uh, evening wear to bags, I just love the fact that I can adjust the tension so easily. And um, the little tool, this uh, little multi-tool for adjusting the bobbin, you can't do it so easily on the 880 Um I mean, I'll, just, I'll say it again. You can do it so easily on the 880 because it's just a matter of um, adjusting that tension. I'm sure, Debbie, you'll be covering that in the training. Um, we will this afternoon, for sure. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. I have one more question for you. What's your best advice for the B880 customer? I um, think the best thing you can tell people is if you want to purchase a B880, then you have to change the way you think about sewing because it does operate differently and you need to uh, and I'm so pleased you used the word because the rhythm is different and you know I'm a busy busy person and I'm racing around and I'm doing a million things and I it helps me I have to slow down I have to do it correctly and I love the way it tells me um, when I'm doing things not quite right, you know, with the, the different senses that are there. So I it think does get a little bossy from time to time, right? It does get a little bit bossy, but, you know, I think you can become firm friends. And I think mm -hmm. the thing is, a lot of people have other machines, and often if they get annoyed with them, 880, they go back to their old machine. They should put their old machine away, mm -hmm. and then they should focus on the, the 880. It's it's a it's a little bit of a bonding process, I think, at first. Yeah, that's right. And they sure. should go to classes and learn things. Oh, it's not absolutely. it's not always or not always the best place on the Facebook groups to get the right answers because everybody has different ideas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we do have a lot of uh, a lot of um, resources out there that people can learn on the YouTube uh, Bernina channel too. So uh, there's oh, of a course lot of stuff out there so yeah absolutely lots of how-to videos and also blog articles all sorts of things there's a ton of resources there is there is well thank you so much sarah and um i'll see you at the end yeah i'm just gonna sit down and enjoy <laughs> okay all right all right so uh so let me get started on this so what we're going to do is I have a couple of videos um, that I am going to voice over. Uh, sometimes in webinars, uh, videos don't always uh, come across great. So the voice part of it will, um, will just be me doing it live. So I'm going to break this down into parts. So first, I'm going to show you a really short, this is how to thread the B880 on the top, right? We're only going to talk about the top this morning. And then I'm going to break it down into bytes so that you see all the different parts that you need to pay attention to when you're threading this machine. And then I'll show an, you another video that is the step-by-step, um, -step, kind of going over that again. So I'm gonna tell you the steps a few times. Hopefully by the time we get to the end of the whole webinar, you'll have it in your head of how this should be threaded correctly. So I'm going to minimize my PowerPoint and pull up my first video. So so we are going to thread this machine nice and easy, super fast. 
it's actually faster to thread this machine than a traditional machine because a lot of it happens internally and the machine does it for you. So that's just the quick run through. So let's get back to my PowerPoint and we're gonna step through each part. Okay, so let's identify the key points in the threading process. First stop is the sensor on the right side of the machine. So when you thread this machine, you're going to pull the thread from the spool to the first thread guide above it. And then you're going to put it into the sensor here on the right side of the machine. So the important part is that you have to keep that thread up in that little circle the whole time until you cut the thread off at the other end. If, it, if the thread, if you put it up in there and you drop the thread and it comes sliding out of that sensor, then the machine will probably keep telling you that there's something wrong with your threading. And we always look at that message that comes up as if it's like, oh, my thread's broken. Sometimes it's just that we didn't thread it correctly. So the thread has to stay up in that little sensor until you cut the thread off at the other end. And we'll sh I'll show you that in video as well because if you do let it drop, it will message you that there's something amiss with your threading. So the solution then, if this is your, if this is what you've decided is your problem, then the solution is just to cut the thread here at the spool and re-thread it completely. The second point along the way is to look at this little tab that you'll see at the top of the machine along the threading path. That is called the thread separator. And I remember back whenever we first got this machine, there was a big to do about, do we put it behind that or in front of it? Well, I found out that it really doesn't matter unless you are using twin needles. So if you are using two spools of thread and a twin needle, then one thread goes behind it, one thread goes in front of it because it keeps them from twisting and breaking along the way. That's all that's for. So when I thread this machine, I lay the thread on the top of the machine and slide it toward me. So my thread always comes in behind this little thread separator. Next is that the white light that is this threader button means that the take up lever is in position to accept your thread and the tension discs are prepared to accept the thread as well. So you have to wait until this white light comes on before you can pull the thread down the left side of the machine. That's actually required that you do it this way. There is a solution coming for you though, if you like to thread it a little faster. So just hold that thought for a minute. So once that white light is um, lit up, then you can slide the thread down the side. When you slide the thread down the side, what happens on the inside of the machine, if you took that little door off on the front, you would see this happen. And what happens is the thread, you'll see in the picture on the right-hand side, the thread goes into the take-up lever and there's like a guides in there. So you have to let that um, thread pull into there. How do you make sure that happens? Well, you make sure that happens because you're holding tension on the thread the whole time while you're threading the machine. I'll get to that in the video again too. So you must pull the thread down into the take-up lever. If you pull that thread nice and lightly down through there, it might not get there, and then your threading is not gonna be done correctly. Next, there's a thread guide right above the needle that you see in the picture on the right. And then the next key point is this uh, presenter or thread clip has a couple different names. There are several others as well, but um, this little guy is the thing that drops down and swings in front of the needle to put the thread into the needle eye. So if you lay your thread nice and lightly in there, it may or may not hold on to the thread long enough to get there. And so sometimes I hear customers or dealers would say to me, my customer said, oh, the, the, thread didn't 
stay in the needle or it it came out it never threaded the needle I, it never threads the needle most of the time if it doesn't thread your needle it's because you're not pushing it into this presenter hard enough to make sure it holds on to the thread long enough to get there to get to the eye of the needle okay so don't be shy about this this is a machine that you don't have to be like soft about it you can go ahead and push that thread into there i actually prefer that you push it away from you when you put your thread in there it should move away from you maybe an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch it actually pushes away from you so the last point in the threading process is cutting the thread and you wouldn't think this would be a big deal but it kind of is let me explain so when you use the thread cutter you swing the thread back to front and you pull the thread straight down to the bed of the machine if you pull the thread towards you it's going to cut a little bit short and maybe not as clean of a cut so maybe the needle will thread the needle i will thread but it might pull back out and that's because you're pulling it when you back pull it back to front you're pulling it towards you the correct way is to pull it down to the bed of the machine so that's all of the threading points along the way so are you ready to see another video all right i might pause this along the way so here's a picture of the 880 and hold on let me pause that okay so the first step in the process is to swing your uh, threader uh, mechanism on the right side of the machine to the right until it clicks take your thread put it on the spool take your thread up to the thread guide that goes with it and grab the thread two hands like this holding it with tension and you will hold that tension the entire time until you cut the thread off at the other end if you do not you could get threader issues so the next point is you pull it up into that sensor that i mentioned in the powerpoint up on the right hand side and you'll see that there is that point where you have that thread up in that sensor so pull the thread with your right hand set your hand on top of the machine to make sure that thread stays up in the sensor that's the easiest way pull a length of thread lay it on the top of the machine slide it towards you okay then you're going to take the thread and put it behind the thread guide above the needle and push it into that presenter that i'm pointing to there push back and away from you just a little bit Bring the thread back to front in the cutter and straight down toward the bed of the machine. Now, you'll notice I never let go of the thread on the right hand side. That's because you're not allowed. This is the rule hold on to the thread until you cut the other end. Then you can let go. Once you let go, then you push the threader button on the left side of the machine and pretty much every time it's going to thread the machine for you perfectly all right switch back to powerpoint okay so let's just do a quick review so third time i'm saying it. it takes three times for us to remember everything so here we go hold the thread with both hands with tension until you cut the thread at the other end rest your hand on top of the machine to ensure that first sensor is engaged do not pull down the thread on the left side of the machine until the threading button lights up Push the thread into the presenter or the thread clip. Cut the thread straight down toward the bed of the machine. Then you can let go of the thread with your right hand and touch the threader button. So if you practice it, 
it becomes second nature like everything else. But it does take some practice for those who are unfamiliar with the threading process. So let's talk about the speed threader, because I know you're out there. I've met you all. I sometimes am a speed threader. This is the person who would actually prefer to not wait for that white light button to turn on. So let me show you my last video. All right, so for the speed threader, you're gonna first touch the white light button on the left side of the machine. Pause it. Hold on a minute. So touch the white light button first. The machine will set up internally to accept the thread correctly. Then you reach on the right side, pull the thread down, right in front, no pausing, no waiting, cut the thread, push the white light button, and you're done. It is a split second faster for those of us who prefer to be the speed threader. So either way is appropriate and fine for you to do that. All right, back to PowerPoint. All right, so let's do a little review for the speed threader. The key threading points to remember, press the threader button first. Then hold the thread with both hands with tension until you cut the thread at the other end. Rest that right hand on top of the machine just like before to keep the thread in the sensor. Pull the thread along the thread path down to the needle, push the thread into the presenter, cut the thread straight down to the bed of the machine, and then you let go of the thread with the right hand and touch the threader button. Okay, so now we have two methods to thread the machine. One for, you know, the times when we're relaxed and not in a hurry, and one for the moments when we are in a hurry. So, um, let me show you the threader video one more time, the very first one, because here's what I want you to do. Hold on, let me pause it. Here's what I want you to do. As you watch the video, I want you to think through the points, the key points that I've mentioned to you. So you can see it for yourself and I want you to repeat it in your head so that you don't forget how to do this. So super easy and super fast. All right. All right, so there are times when our thread breaks and how do we handle that kind of situation? So the first thing is, we can easily re-thread the machine when the thread breaks. There are two, two ways that you could do this. One is if the thread breaks and you can still see the thread right there hanging right above the needle. So you raise your presser foot, you pull that broken thread, give yourself a length of thread. And now the only parts of the machine you have to thread are the uh, threading guide right above the needle, the presenter, and then cut it off but you still have to hold tension along the way. So you give that thread a pull, you grab the thread on the right-hand side above the spool so that it doesn't, um, so you can pull some tension. And then you just thread those three points right above the needle, the presenter, and then cut it off and then touch the uh, threader button, okay? And that will all work just fine, okay? So that's one way. The other way, what if the machine tells you your thread is broken, but you know it's not? Because sometimes that happens. So if you get that message on your screen and it looks like, oh, your thread is broken, 
So you check your thread. No, it's it's really not. So all you have to do is touch that X at the bottom of the screen and continue to sew. I think what we have to do is we have to look at this moment as a security feature. There are multiple sensors within the machine that tells us when things aren't quite right. And I personally always looked at this as a, um, I would always err on the side of, oh, if you're gonna help me because if my thread is broken, that could be a really bad thing for the current technique I'm using. I need to know that. And so it may err, it errs on the side of protecting you. So if this is a security function, and I, I want you to understand that sometimes it thinks it's broken, but maybe it's not. And, and that's okay. And you can just touch the X at the bottom and continue to sew. And if it doesn't continue to sew, then you were probably wrong and the machine was probably right. That's all. Okay. So um, I'm giving you some homework today. Here's your homework. I want you to practice. Before we meet this afternoon, I want you to turn on your 880, get a spool of thread, and practice this 10 times in a row. Think it through, pause at each point, make sure you're hitting all those key points along the way. Got it? Homework, who knew? So I just wanna do a reminder of where you can find the recording for this webinar, and that would be at Bernina.com, you would hover over the words learn and create at the top of the screen, just hover over, and then the different screen will come into view, and you'll select recorded webinars, and then what you'll see is uh, that uh, part that's circled at the bottom of my screen, you'll see a whole page of recorded webinars, and they are categorized by sewing, embroidery, um, overlockers. So there are different categories there to help you find whatever webinar you're looking for. So if you want to see these this again, then that's the way to see it again. Okay. This afternoon, we're going to talk about bobbin threading. At three o'clock central time, we're going to learn how to correctly thread the bobbin for sewing and for added tension. And some of us call that for embroidery, but it's really for more than just embroidery. I'll tell you about that later today. We're gonna learn how to adjust the bobbin tension and why you should do that. And then we're gonna talk about several reminder messages that the um, 880 offers you. So I think it's time for questions. Hello. Hello. Uh, and that was very interesting. Thank you, Debbie. I do have a few questions. Um, okay. They tend to be a little all over the place. Well, we um, should invite but, Sarah back in too. Sarah, yeah. welcome to join in. us. I'm here. I enjoyed that too. Uh, as a, one of those fast threader people. <laughs> oh, what? You're a speed threader? Who knew? <laughs> Me too. Um, so one question is, what tips do you have for using a thicker thread, for example, a, a Guterman jeans thread? Um, I mean, you can use any weights of thread. I've used weights of thread as um, as heavy as like an eight, which is really pretty heavy. It's heavier than a jeans thread. The biggest thing is using the right needle. I mean, it's really when you use different and unique threads, it's it's a lot about using the right needle. And yes, you may have to adjust your top tension to accommodate for that weight going through your tension discs. Because of course your tension is set for, you know, standard kind of sewing threads. So I would say um, adjusting your tension, the top tension, and I would also say make sure you use a large enough needle to accommodate the weight of the thread. And, you know, some threads are just more brittle or they break easier. And so sometimes it's just that the eye of your needle is too small. And that, that kind of friction on the thread will cause it to um, break and, and fray. So I have a, a little thing to add. Um, sometimes you don't necessarily need to have the same thread top and bottom. You know, you'll use a lighter thread in the bobbin and then you'll definitely have to adjust the top tension 
usually higher to get rid of little bobbles that you see on the back side. Mm -hmm. And um, if you are doing something like a bag where you need to have the same top and bottom, um, it is possible to use that type of thread that you're talking about, at both top and bottom though. But as mm -hmm. Debbie says, needle, it's changing the needle for the right thread. It solves a multitude of issues. Really does, for sure. Great, we have another thread question. Um, do you recommend stacked thread or must it be cross wound? Oh, um, you can use any thread. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. What matters is how, where you put the thread on the threader um, mechanism and how it, um, how you thread it is a little bit different. And so that's part of my lesson on Thursday. <laughs> All right, this might be yeah, something that you're doing in the future too. Um, Lorna is saying, sometimes my top thread breaks and I can't find it near the needle um, mm -hmm. to pull it through correctly. How do I fix this? I've had the thread break and it's pulled up and I cannot find it. So no you Debbie take off, yeah, 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 I say you take off the door of the, of the front of the machine, cut the thread on the right and pull it through the window of the door to pull it through correctly. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, Marion has a question at the, th at the needle, there are two slits. Do you, do you thread behind the first slit or the second, or does it matter? You mean the thread guide, I'm guessing right above I'm the, that might be it. Yeah. Yeah. Right above the needle, you go behind both. It looks like there's a pin that's like a uh, horizontal and then a more flat piece right next to it. And you go behind both of those. Um, when using the multi-spool holder, what is the best path to feed the thread into the sensor? You mean a, a separate? I think that might be the accessory. The Maybe. one that fits on the back of the machine. Is that what you think? I think that might be what they're referring to. Okay. Okay. Uh, Lu Luann, if you want to clarify that in the questions, we can come back to it. Um, okay. Luann asked that question. This is awesome. Oh. Someone wants to say, I've learned so much. I wish I had known this before. Another person's like, I've owned the 8 Series since 830, and I now teach mastery classes. I wish uh, I will definitely be watching this again. Um, and then let's see. Uh, one person is asking, can all presser feet be used with the needle threader? No. The, any of the presser feet that are larger size should not be used with a needle threader. You want to know how I know that? Because I had the uh, leather roller foot on my machine and forgot to tell the machine that I was using the leather roller foot and I broke my needle bar like in turn, like totally went to the hospital to get fixed. That's how powerful that needle threader is. So the larger feet, like the leather roller foot, and I this is also part of Thursday's lesson, we'll review it again, but uh, the, um, the ruffler, um, the binder attachment, what other ones, Sarah, can you think of that? Um, probably those yeah. are the big ones. Maybe the walking foot would be one. I think the walking foot's okay. Okay. Yeah. It's mostly the ruffler, the leather roller, and yeah. the finger attachment. Thanks. Um, what's the correct position for the thread once it's been threaded? Do you keep it in front, move it to the back, so it is facing the thread path? I, I think I know the answer because Debbie taught me that <laughs> it goes up into the cutter. And then it's the perfect length. And it's the perfect length. Yes, we don't. Um, so when this machine starts to sew, it actually pulls thread um, down underneath the stitch plate. And so you want that thread tail to be short. So you cut it on the side of the machine and leave it hang up there. And then when you start to sew, it will be the right length. If you have a really long thread tail and that whole thing gets sucked underneath, it'll wrap around your hook and then you have to go down there and clean it up because that 880 does not like thread wrapped around its hook at all. And 
sometimes it can be you know challenging to get that out again we're gonna, we're going to talk about that this afternoon a little bit um but yeah i just make sure it's the thread tail is cut short and um did she have another comment was there another comment that i need to address I think that was it that was it okay yeah but sherry loves your jacket oh well thank you sherry <laughs> um and then uh a couple people have commented saying i've never learned any of this i am so excited thank you Good. um and then uh another question about what happens when the thread breaks but can't see the thread so maybe debbie can cover that later in one of our future sessions mm -hmm. um is there any is the threading me method different for any different weight threads specifically lighter weight threads not that i know of sarah everything no I, sometimes i find with finer threads or more slippery threads they seem to like to pull out of the needle i've come across mm -hmm. that a little bit but it also depends on what size needle you're using you know maybe mm -hmm. it's a specialist needle for embroidery mm -hmm. uh, but other than that it's yeah, it's a good practice good practice for my eyesight to have to sometimes sometimes <laughs> thread it by, yeah and of course you have the the manual threader anyway which is there for sometimes yeah. when you need those um feet that you can't use which them. which i didn't really address here but if you are using you know a twin needle or any kind of specialty needle like a wing needle or you know anything unusual then you don't want that threader to that presenter to swing over and crash into your needles because it would break your needles guaranteed so because it only threads the needle in the center position it doesn't thread a left and a right so you do have to manually thread that if you tell the machine you're using a specialty needle in the security areas which we'll talk about thursday um then the machine will know not to not to swing that presenter over but will thread the rest of the mechanism inside the machine for you great just um just another comment about the webinar it's uh, i can tell you from experience that if you do debbie's threading procedure your machine will sew without difficulty so thank you for that comment rebecca um just thank a you. reminder i see a few comments uh we are having this again at 3 p.m east, uh, central time 4 p.m eastern no am i saying that right yeah that's that. right yeah okay um and then uh we have a number of questions, but we are starting to run out of time. Um, I don't think we can get through them all. I don't know how far you guys want to keep going. I don't mind. I'm here. Okay. A few more minutes, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll give it a few more threaded. Um, okay. Um, sorry, there's a lot of comments. Just, you know, great job. Thank you so much um and then there's some other technical ones which i'll try to uh, answer privately um does it matter where you put spools on the right side of the thread holder like you know there's multiple pins there is there a good place like is there a best place i guess well um yes sort of so usually i just use the um the front um spool holder but a lot of my threads happen to be cross wound, but if you're using a flat wound, then you'll want to use the back one and you will thread it through the, uh, there's a little eye, a guide um, on that divider on the, on the threader. And we're gonna talk about that on Thursday. And you'll wanna pull it through that before you to the threader, um, the threader guide above the spool. And we'll get through into details and if um hopefully that person asked that question will be able to come on thursday and if not the recording will be on bernia.com so they can also see it there so we'll get into the um, sarah did you have anything else to add there i can see you looking at your machine i was just going to see if i could pull off my piece and show it <laughs> to, to be your i'll show i'll show i'll show, I'll show it on thursday I, yeah, I thought that, I'm sure you would. It's it's interesting how um, how there is options, but really there is yeah a, a good way. I to mean, do there everything. there are no real rules, I guess. I mean, there might might I might tell you there are some rules, but you know, 
if it isn't working, then do it my way. It'll work. Just, <laughs> you sound like Frank Sinatra. <laughs> just do it my way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do we have any other um, questions? Yeah, someone wants to know, can they thread their needle before they put a foot on? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you can. Um, and I, I mean, there's so many questions, but I think we are running out of time. Um, so I will be sure to share these questions with Debbie. And I know some of these questions are also going to be answered in her future webinars. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's it. Anything okay. else? No, thank you everybody for coming. I appreciate your time. I know it's a valuable commodity, so I appreciate. Thank you, Sarah, for coming. I, oh, it's a pleasure. It's it's nice to see this this feedback from happy customers because I can oh, yeah. then go back to the go back to the factory and tell them just you know that people are pretty excited about the machine. So it's and great. they and they sh and they should be. So exactly. I, I'm excited about it too. So exactly. thank you, uh, Heather, for your help today. And um, I'll see thank you this afternoon. I'll see you this afternoon. Yeah, I'll be here. Mm -hmm. You bet. <laughs> we'll see you this afternoon, and a, a recording of this webinar will get posted on Bernina.com in the next day or two. Um, and thank you so much for joining us. Have well, a great one more day. thing. Don't oh, yeah. forget to do your homework. <laughs> your hot task. I'm sorry, I'm a stickler that way. Just go do it. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. We'll see you this afternoon. Bye. Bye. Bye.